Well, I, I thank Chairman Perlmutter for that, and, and I thank him also, again, for his leadership for holding this very, very important hearing that underscores uh, the, the problem that we're seeing in bank deserts uh, with uh, bank consolidation uh, and with the, the, the lack of new bank formation that is um, impairing our local economies. I, I applaud my good friend Greg Meeks for uh, identifying this problem in his area in a more urban congressional district. I have a similar problem with rural banking deserts in Kentucky. We've talked about the, the solution. I also want to uh, applaud my friend Mr. Auchincloss uh, for identifying this um, uh, in, a, in a more suburban uh, district. And the data on the dearth of de novo bank formation in recent years, combined with the trends in bank consolidation and closure, are troubling to all of us because too many communities are left without access to, to traditional financial services. Uh, this committee advanced Mr. Auchincloss's bill that calls for a study. Um, and I, I uh, appreciate the American Bankers Association and, and uh, Mr. Uh, Reuter for uh, pointing out that the ABA endorsed uh, Mr. Auchincloss's bill uh, that would uh, uh, commission uh, additional studies. But, but I would respectfully, Mr. Reuter, um, argue that another study is insufficient. I mean, you've, you've identified yourself in your testimony that we know what the solution is. The solution is tailoring, regulatory tailoring. And uh, my bill, which is also, Mr. Reuter, endorsed by the American Bankers Association, but was not mentioned in your uh, testimony, uh, is the actual solution. It's the solution that you just prescribed. H.R. 2561, the Promoting Access to Capital and Underbanked Community Acts Act would provide targeted temporary phase-in of regulatory capital requirements to fuel new bank formation and bring banking services to underserved area, areas. This is precisely the bill that, Mr. Reuter, your organization has endorsed. Uh, it goes beyond what uh, Mr. Auchincloss has done. I applaud Mr. Auchincloss for his leadership. I applaud the ABA for endorsing his bill. But his, his bill, uh, respectfully, is just another study. Uh, my legislation is the solution. It's the solution to the lack of new bank formation in Mr. Auchincloss's district. It is the solution to the lack of new bank formation in my rural district. And it is the solution to the lack of new bank formation in Mr. Meeks's district, an urban district. So uh, my question uh, uh, to you is, you know, why, why should we have another study? Why shouldn't we just go ahead and pass the ABA, ICBA endorsed legislation that actually implements the regulatory tailoring that is required, Mr. Reuter? Well, first of all, Congressman Barr, thank you for your sponsorship of that bill, and I agree with you. I think another study uh, just uh, lets more time go by and more bank consolidation occur. Um, so I agree 100%. Another thing I'd like to point out in the cost of a de novo is uh, one of the things you have to raise to start a bank is capital. And what you're seeing is some individuals and some groups form a fintech versus a bank because due to the regulatory arbitrage, the market's valuing them higher. And anybody that's making an investment to run a bank or run any company needs to have a return. So Again, why a level playing field is very important. But thank you for your sponsorship of the bill, and I agree with you wholeheartedly. Well, thank, thank you very much. And, and Professor Hughes, let me talk about why this is so important. A recent FDIC study showed that large banks are much more likely than small community banks to have minimum requirements for small business loan amounts and less likely to offer tailored small business loan products. Often, small businesses rely on the relationship banking and the community ties of small banks, especially those banks that are, you know, de novo charters and, and smaller. Um, PPP was an illustra illustrative example of the value of, of small community banks for the smallest businesses. Professor Hughes, what impact does the trend in consolidation and the closure of community banks have on small businesses, particularly in, in rural underserved areas? And, and what does it mean for, um, for startups? entrepreneurs, uh, small entrepreneurs and startups? Thank you, Congressman Barr, for that question. It's very important to have lending facilities in communities of the types that we have just been discussing, inner in-city deserts, small community and suburban areas, and rural communities. And we need to have robust opportunities for lending maintained in those communities so that all of the capital in the country doesn't 
flow to larger cities as we have been seeing in some cases over the last 50 years. So we need to maintain the ability and we need to be certain that there are realistically tailored, I'm going to use that word because I think it's the best word we've heard today for this, tailored ability for small banks to originate loans, smaller loans for startups perhaps, than they might give other kinds of businesses because we need startups, we need small businesses, they are the growth opportunity and we need to be certain that we have the best means of addressing the way in which startups and small businesses contribute to our economy, employ lots of people, provide benefits, but also keep our small communities Professor, alive. Professor, I'm sorry, I've got to cut you off again. And